Madden Football is the home of Super Bowl 57, and this historic matchup is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Miami Dolphins. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. As it'll be the AFC champion Miami Dolphins taking on the champions from the NFC, the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gunn here with Charles Davis. And for the Dolphins, what a turnaround under first-year head coach Mike McDaniel. I mean, this is a franchise that had not won a playoff game since the year 2000. But wow, I mean, they're AFC champions. Give them a big amount of credit for getting here. And how about this franchise in total? They have won the Super Bowl twice. But those were Super Bowl 7 and 8 in 1973-74. They are so excited to be back in the big game. Meanwhile, the Minnesota Vikings are back in the big game for the fifth time in franchise history. But we all know one thing has eluded them all these years. And that's an actual Super Bowl victory, partner. They're 0-4 in their previous visits. Super Bowls 4, 8, 9, and 11. And boy, they had some great teams too, didn't they? Bud Grant was their head coach. Fran Tarkenton, a quarterback. Alan Page and the Purple People Eaters on defense. They were all Hall of Famers. And don't forget Paul Krause. He's a very proud member of that great secondary they had. So we're going back more than 40 years since their last visit. You think the state of Minnesota is excited about this one? I know they are. They're ready to get this one going. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Out of the end zone comes Smith. And look at this. Right away, a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. They start the drive with Peterson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Second down, Peterson again. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. An early test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. They'll run it. Here's Peterson. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And, you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yardage? Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted, lined up. Let's get some points on the board. And they're able to avoid that three and out. 
Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Off play action, it's Cunningham. Blitz coming and down he goes. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack and it brings up second. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Flush to his right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, if those at home were wondering if we were going to see some offense in this Super Bowl, I think your answer was right there. Incomplete, but they take a big shot early. Like the script, if they get the big play early, so much the better. But if nothing else, they send a message. They're going to be aggressive in this game. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Cunningham looking to throw. Man open, it's Moss complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. How about that? They weather the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. Well, after the standard two-week layoff, you always wonder, how's your offense going to respond and come out and play here in the Super Bowl? Well, they got a great answer right there and almost a sigh of relief on that side of the field because now they've got to feel like they can use their entire playbook and game plan for this one. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Back to the ground, Peterson. Oh, that's just not fair, and that won the run. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Earlier in the week when they had their scouting report meeting, this was the explosiveness that they talked about trying to contain. They were concerned about it all week, yet he still did it to them. Wonder how that's going to carry over the rest of the game. Now the extra point try forthcoming. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run by Adrian Peterson. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. And they'll be led out by their six-year quarterback. And no doubt he's living out a dream right now. He's had dating back to his first days of playing football as a kid. But he certainly can't get lost in the moment right now. There's still a Super Bowl to be played. And his offense, they're looking to him to be their leader. You can take it all in when it's over. Right now, you've got the biggest game of your life to win. They begin the drive with Williams. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? 
That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. So the completion results there in nine yards. And third and one now. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called the big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers are getting involved as this game. Williams loses the football, and they will take over at the 26-yard line. He was trying to do anything he could to get that final little bit for the first down. Instead, he lost the ball. Yeah, and he was short of the first down, but not by much. Trying his best, as you noted, to get there. Sometimes that extra effort can cost you. Well, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. But we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Now, here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. That gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep, first and goal. Well, that is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. Yeah, and this could be a sign of what this defense is in for because you know all week long the coaches were preaching to the defense. You've got to be able to wrap up against a back like him or he can make you pay. Technique, technique, technique. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. Out of the gun here, it's Cunningham. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings will add to their first quarter lead here in this Super Bowl. They've got to be thrilled on the road right now. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, and quickly trying to make it 14 to nothing. Yeah, and you mentioned it already. On the road, to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start like that, obviously your confidence rises in a big way, and you're putting some doubt in their minds. Point after, right down the middle, and it's now 14 to nothing. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's polished off by a Viking score. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. Play fake. Here's Marino. It's caught on the right side. Williams. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. 
Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Marino sets up. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake, third down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But it turned up to the task and forced the incompletion. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. To throw is Marino. Now they go screen. It's complete. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. So a change of possession here on the punt and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball, so they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. Yeah, they're almost pushing them to the brink, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers, but you're just not supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Offense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the play. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Up the middle, it's Peterson. 64 yards rushing for him now in the opening quarter of this Super Bowl. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 29-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory as they're down to the 29-yard line. Here's Cunningham. Throw right side, going to be complete to Moss. And he is going to lose yardage here. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Made the quick throw there outside the numbers, and you can feel the thought process. They just wanted to get in his hands and let him make a play. But how about the job they did defensively to keep him bottled up? Instead, they tackle him for a loss. On second down, here's Cunningham. 
He finds his man complete. It's Jordan. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to bring up third and two. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. They'll try the middle with Peterson. And they'll get this down to the 10. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating them up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They run again with Peterson. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. From the five, second and four. They toss it left side to Peterson. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's at the cornerback position. Cunningham. Being chased out left. And he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. And his kick is good. And that'll make this 17-0 here in the opening quarter. So a great first quarter continues here as they add on to that lead. And Brandon, I think it sets up what's going to be an important drive because it's now 17 to nothing. So the other guys, they got to figure out something quick before this game gets away from them. So an early advantage now and a good one. 17-0 our score as they kick this one away. Take it in at the three. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And Miami's offense set and ready to go. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. Here's Marino to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And these guys certainly need something good to go their way because this first quarter has been something of a disaster for them trying to move the ball. But that completion there maybe can get them focused and moving in the right direction. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. When you're down early, how do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message 
is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Marino will look to throw on first. Going for the deep ball. He's got a man complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 36 yards on the play. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. To throw on second and six, Marino. Yeah, he's got it. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, you just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And they'll turn to a power game to try to get in. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. One quarter done, three more to play here in Super Bowl 57. Already 17-0 our score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. And we are back, biggest game of the year, the Super Bowl, and both teams ready for the start of the second quarter. A second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They saw the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. Can this Vikings D hold up one more time? Third and goal. Williams will score. Touchdown, Miami. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have the fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the left hand? Because they're already thinking your head as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating where we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And it's 17-7. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Set 
now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Cunningham. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Now Cunningham. He finds his man complete. It's Jordan. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Now Cunningham. He finds his man complete. It's Jordan. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Now a first down throw, Cunningham. Throw right side complete to Carter. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 15 yards last play and 15 yards here this go around. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Oh, felt like that move deserved more than he got there. A gain of two. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. To throw on second down, Cunningham. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Dolphins force the turnover. They'll take over at their own 27. And when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threw that pass. Uh, what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. Miami set to take over. They come in off a touchdown drive the last time they had the ball. That cut down the lead. Now the defense does their part, got them the football back. So now maybe with the touchdown they scored previously, plus their defense making that stand up and getting them the ball right back, momentum may be shifting in their favor. Well, the jet sweep to start the drive. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Second and ten. Now it's Marino. He finds his man complete. It's Clayton. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Let's 
They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Marino to throw it. It's hauled in by Hardy. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. Marino off of play action. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and ten. Back to throw again. That pass is caught by Hardy. And they're going to get this up to midfield. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The last run got six, now second and four. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Four yards, the pickup, first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Let's go, baby. Now they'll throw it with Marino. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Now Marino. He finds his man complete. That's Hardy. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Down two scores already. I don't think these guys would be too enthralled with the notion of settling for three here. Very nice job of execution on third down. Able to keep the drive moving. They go back to the ground with Williams. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13. Down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender and the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, sometimes a thing of beauty. 
From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now a 10th carry, here's Williams. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Marino will throw. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. On now the Miami field goal unit. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. And his kick here is good. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. Well, still some climbing left to do to get back to even, but forcing a turnover and getting the field goal there, that's a small step toward erasing the early deficit. Absolutely. That interception field goal, that's the beginning of what they hope will be several steps towards erasing that deficit and building a lead of their own by the time this game is over. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover that plagued it on the last one. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And a short pickup to about the 25. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Again, Peterson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 102 yards rushing for him now as he goes over the century mark here in this Super Bowl. That run is what defenses don't like about dealing with Adrian Peterson. His ability to drop a shoulder and run through contact. And he's amazing at keeping those strong legs going, isn't he? For him, no run is ever truly over. I mean, he's actually not even convinced that when they blow the whistle, he's actually down. That's how he finishes runs in a big way. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Cunningham to throw. That one caught by Carter. 
And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. He's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. So now first and ten as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 46. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Cunningham looking to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Jordan. And he'll wind up getting about six out of that, as that's going to lead us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes on the clock in the second quarter of this Super Bowl. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Looking to throw. Cunningham. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three. And he'll need all the leg he's got here. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this will remain a one-touchdown game. And anytime you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting up field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and they'll be left with second and a couple. Now they'll run on the draw. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Now Marino coughs it up. He lost the football. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. First and ten, Cunningham. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. 
buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Once again, they'll keep it on the ground. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. The Vikings send out their punter as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And a fair catch is taken here a step or two inside the 45-yard line. And the Dolphins with one final possession here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Out of the gun, it's Marino. And he wisely will throw that one away. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and 10. Back to throw. Looking deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. They gave it a shot with a deep pass, but it wasn't going to work there. And now there's less time for them to try and get three before the half. Let's see what they dial up on this next snap. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Marino. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say, we'll see what happens. Final play of the half, it's Marino. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. So we've reached halftime here in the Super Bowl. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, Let's run through the next-gen stats for the Vikings in that first half. And you'll see they've had success running the football. And that bodes well for their chances of lifting that Lombardi trophy. Meanwhile, for the Dolphins, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
These two teams sat through a longer than usual 30 minute wait, but we're back in action here in the Super Bowl. Fields it right around the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And they trail here in the Super Bowl, but fortunately for them, Charles, very much still within striking range. Yeah, things didn't go exactly the way they planned in the first half. To me, they appeared to be a little bit tight, made a few errors they normally wouldn't. But, of course, this is the Super Bowl, so things get a little bit heightened in that regard. But I think they have to feel a little fortunate. They're only down what they are here starting the third quarter. They start the second half here with Williams. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That felt like a trap, because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Still nine remaining on second down. Now a toss left side. It's Williams. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. He's going to air one out, and it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's averaging just under 50 yards of punt as he gets this away. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. First and ten, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They start the drive with Peterson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. It's a lot of no creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. A play fake. Now Cunningham. Throw left side complete. That's Peterson. And yeah, he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. On first down, it's Cunningham. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Carter. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Here's Cunningham, and he's got his man in stride, complete. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. 
and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Play action, it's Cunningham. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Peterson. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Second down and eight. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. This on first and goal. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Only a yard that time, second and goal. You gotta be ready for anything when you play defense against this head coach. That is not something you'd expect to see here in the red zone, but it winds up getting him a few yards. And the ball situated at the nine, second and goal. They run over center with Peterson. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. They'll look to throw on third and goal. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. From six yards away. And the Vikings will extend their third quarter lead here in this Super Bowl. Partner, they had a good lead as they went in at the half, and they came out here in the second half and found a way to extend it. I love their consistency. Don't worry about what they said at halftime. This seemed like a team that was ready to play 60 minutes, and while this game is far from over, I love their approach. Extra point right down the middle. And a lead now up to 14. A 10-play drive that time. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Miami's offense set and ready to go. 
Well, these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. On third down, Marino. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But part of their struggles in the first time was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this full design play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Marino sets up. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for Knock. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll bring up second down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw is Marino. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Out comes this field general once more leading his offense back onto the field. And do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything <laughs> out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. Now Cunningham. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard at its second down. Cunningham. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert 
on third and nine. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Ah, oh, the quarterback got away with one there. Looked like he was in line for a pick, but instead, it's knocked harmlessly to the turf. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And he'll take it just outside the 40. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. From midfield now, Marino over the middle complete. That's Clayton. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. And just a yard to go here on second down. The busy night continues for Williams. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Here's Marino to throw. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Now it's Marino. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Eight yards, first down as they're able to convert. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. Brought down at the 20. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Now Marino to throw it. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, 
He's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks. And now here's a tackle behind the line. On now the Miami field goal unit. This a 33-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And out now come the Vikings. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. They run with Peterson. He's been busy tonight. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now Cunningham. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. From the gun on third down. Cunningham. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Marino will look to throw on first. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Just one more quarter remains in the season-long race for the Lombardi Trophy here at Super Bowl 57 from Glendale. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we're back in the Super Bowl. Time to decide who gets to hoist that Lombardi Trophy as we begin the fourth and final quarter of action. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. from the gun he'll hand this off that's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48 yard line 18 big yards on that one and a Miami first we'll definitely see some open running lanes and he's taking advantage of it right now but that shouldn't be a surprise defense has the lead they're playing for the pass first From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. 
from the shotgun. Marino, and that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and ten. He'll look to throw. He's going to air one out. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think that part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now Marino. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. A big game in his sights, but he did not reel it in. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And they have been the better of the two sides to this point with a two-score lead. Fourth quarter of this Super Bowl. And the Lombardi Trophy within reach as they start this drive first and ten. They start the drive with Cook. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. The Vikings on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This will be third and six. Cunningham to throw. just get rid of it critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there that clock keeps rolling has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out now they're likely gonna have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. And out come the Dolphins now. And we're at the time in this Super Bowl where, look, they need points. And they need them badly. Trailing here in the fourth quarter as they begin this drive first and ten. He's got it complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. No daylight for him to run through there, and he ran into the defensive tackle, and that guy blocks a whole lot of daylight as it is. He is truly a big man who just made a big play. 
Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Play fake. Here's Marino. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. And down to the 44, five yards that time. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Moreno here from the gun. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. 67 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Working with a second and three. Out of the gun, it's Moreno. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 18. 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. And that means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. They go back to the ground with Williams. And he's dropped just before the line to game. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And this is going to be incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage. Especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight. You just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. On now the Miami field goal unit. This is a 26-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. The kicking team out for Miami as they will send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. 
And now out comes Minnesota. And the tension ratcheting up all around. A one-score game, fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. This is what you folks came for. Every play with the potential to win or lose a title as they look to drain some time off this clock. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Cunningham looking to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. The Vikings on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 11. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very right often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else with the football. I get it. That's a stud wide receiver you want to try to get in the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. The Vikings send out their punter, standing right on his own five-yard line. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and it'll be Dolphin football. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Here's Marino. This one swung out to Williams. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. On second down, Williams. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. On third down, here's Williams. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Here we go, it's Marino on fourth down. Oh, there's that man again, it's complete. And he will have a Dolphins first down as they manage to convert, and that'll keep the drive alive. So not only do they convert on fourth, but they pick up 22 yards in the process. And that's a much needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. They give it to Williams, running right. 
Taken down at the 30. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. 92 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they're able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. They'll set up to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Clayton. And the Dolphins are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. First and goal, a touchdown and a two-point conversion here are musts. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he's going to ball his way into the end zone for the Dolphins score. A great play there. His second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Dolphins have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. The touchdown is huge, but the focus now is on the two-point play. I don't want to say they have a cushion here, but if they don't get it, they still have a chance for onside kick. Yeah, they would need some big-time help, but you're right. There would be a shot, but the focus right now on that two-point conversion. One more hurdle here. They need the two-point conversion to, for the moment, stay alive in these playoffs. And it's incomplete, but a penalty flag is out. And this looks like pass interference. Let's see. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? So now a big play here as the Dolphins will go for the two. Throwing here, Marino. And it's caught. And with it, we are tied here in the fourth. Huge, huge conversion there to tie this thing up, but they're not done yet. Their defense needs to get a stop. Yeah, there's still plenty of time for their team to come downfield and put some points on the board, but job one was taken care of. The two-point conversion to get this thing tied. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all 
Aguilar score as he sends this one away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. On first down, it's Cunningham. He'll get that one to Carter complete. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. On second down, here's Cunningham. Now, quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. This defense hasn't had the best showing in this game, but a critical knockdown there. If they can hang on, I guess the end will kind of justify the mean. Certainly, and just think of it this way. It may not be the quantity of the plays that they've had because those haven't been great, but they get a few more quality ones like that. That could finish things off for them. Here's Cunningham. Over the middle, complete. It's Carter. And he will have a Vikings first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got a hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Now Cunningham. And incomplete on the deep ball. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Cunningham. He's going to loft one deep left side here. This is caught inside the 15. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. A game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. They'll run with Peterson. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? They try again with Peterson. And that's a touchdown as they broke it our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. I don't know how many more of these my heart can take, my man. I just don't know. Another big touchdown late in the game. They look like they're in control, but still, there's a chance. Block the extra point, go down and score, kick the extra point themselves. They can pull this one out. Yeah, but also on the sideline that just took the lead, you got to get your defense ready and the special teams unit for the kickoff coming up. Yeah, you're exactly right. Got to pull everyone together and make sure they're still focused and aren't already celebrating a win. The try here for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Adrian Peterson. Now 
Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee, and they'll put it out to the 25. So the Dolphins now down on the scoreboard. 44 seconds to go. And they have to have a touchdown to level this Super Bowl as they come up on first down. Now it's Marino. From the left side, it's complete. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Here's Marino. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and ten. They'll look to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Down to their last chance now. This is going to have to be a heat for the end zone and just hope for a miracle. And I don't sit back with everyone back defending. I've got to have somebody rushing the quarterback. Don't make it easy for him to set up and throw the ball all the way downfield. One last shot for Marino. Now he's going to go up top over the middle. And then he is caught at the 10-yard line. And they move this all the way down to the 9. And they have done it. The Minnesota Vikings are the Super Bowl champions. And the Lombardi Trophy is going back to the land of 10,000 lakes. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That The task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever.